Thank you for tuning in to the World Builders Anvil, episode 310. Let's form a game story for Jeff's indie RPG video game. Take 10. Take, take 11 team. <laughs> Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place where we will prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builder's Anvil. I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. Let's sup from the Muck of Java and build. Welcome back, as always. I am the Uber, Jeff. And uh, fumbling as ever, because it took me all the takes to get the intro done. I am Michael Miller. It's Michael Eleventeen. Michael Eleventeen. I mean, it was really just like five, but but yeah, but way more than I've had. Eleventeen is long... a much cooler sounding number. It is, and one of my favoriteest numbers. Um, and it's been a long time since I've had to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but but you know what? I kind of like it when every now and then we have a difficulty creating the... Usually, we've gotten to the point where we do it so smoothly these days. It almost... It's not as fun as back when we used to screw them up all the time. Because we'd get because <laughs> usually we'd get each other laughing and that's what would get us to screw the intro up. Yeah. Yeah. There's something Which, special about us screwing up. Happens a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and I apologize if my, my voice is still raspy or if you hear a throat lozenge, I'm trying not to, to uh, make sound with it, but you might hear it occasionally. I do apologize. Um, I've been fighting a very bad, bad cold. So Yeah, and it's funny thing is, is like we recorded an episode just a couple days ago. So whatever you guys last listened yeah. to was um, just a couple days ago and he sounded better. And you're and actually, felt worse. You, yeah, and you felt worse, <laughs> but you're, yeah. but you're sounding a little worse today. Yeah. I think it's more maybe just draining, I guess. I don't know. Mm. So I have moments where my nose is not completely covered in snot. It's pretty mm. awesome. Well, you know what? I find you know, I have found that a lot of times it's not actually snot. It's just that your tissue is really inflamed. So I find that um, like Vicks Vapor Rub for me, anything menthol helps yeah. uh, a great deal. We use an essential oil um, that essentially does that. You diffuse it into the room. I can't even smell this stuff right now. Um, and it, for me, it's it's actually, I mean, the membrane isn't inflamed too, but it's also, it's both. Um, I try not to take ibuprofen, which would help. Yeah. But the problem is because of my knee pain and I refuse to take narcotics. Well, ibuprofen um, isn't a narcotic, is it? No, no, but I refuse to take narcotics. So I've ingested so much ibuprofen. Oh, that it takes a lot to do anything. Well, not not just that though. It's, 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 it's actually bad for your stomach. So oh, I, yeah, yeah. I really have to be in pain <laughs> before mm-hmm. I start to take any kind of pain medicine. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, there go the rules of Jeffrey and uh, that could be a pit maybe in the, um, in the game, but a uh, back way back in episode 286 with the one Was backer it that long ago. Yeah. I, I, I did a search and um, with the one backer for my uh, indie video game so far, me. Um, oh, I was about to say, I didn't know you had a backer. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm the guy. Um, it might take a bit of time. Uh, I'll pro- there'll probably be like lots of uh, releases and fun stuff. I don't know, like I said, I'm, I'm just screwing around with this. Uh, I just want to do it because I want to do it. Um, it will be in RPG Maker for those of you that don't remember back. There'll be links to the show notes from there was a, a show that we did. I think it was 268, and then back then I was doing the Tuesday tidbits, and so like there's like a bonus episode where I talk a bit more about it. Um, but they're sort of like what we wanted in video games and, um, and, and now what we want and, um, um, essentially like sort of elements we like wanted to bring into the game. And it's kind of funny. just like, like literally this last week, um, I was doing some work for my wife and I's company and I got messaged by, uh, uh, James, good old James from, uh, the undercroft who found something that he thought reminded him of hearing about this. Mm. So he actually sent it to me, probably telling me to get moving. Mm -hmm. People know if you were following the show, I move at my own pace and I will not be detoured. So, um, um, deterred. 
yeah, I can't speak or really. Well, I'm just not point. sure. I didn't know if you were using because you know you have an expansive vocabulary. I didn't know if there was something that. No, that was not cleverness. That's just my inability to speak at this. Gotcha. Point, so. Fair enough. Um, not that there's normally a, a very good speaking ability. Is another great irony about Jeffrey here for everyone out there. Uh, I was never taught phonics. Um, there was a small break from phonics when I was a young kid in school and um, they did sight reading. So I'm very good at sight reading. And when I sound out words, I take bits of words that I recognize from other places. That I know how to sound mm-hmm. and I mush them together. But oftentimes it gives me very unique sounds to words because English is not consistent. Um, and it's funny. I usually blame Indiana and people from Indiana sometimes will bust my chops because my speaking issues and sounding issues aren't, uh, really from being from Indiana, part of it maybe is, but uh, really most of it's actually uh, because I was taught sight reading and the way I was taught to sound out words. And so um, uh, there we go with another whoa, Jeffrey, that pit's getting big. So uh, uh, give a little background though, uh, for those of you, um, go ahead and pause this episode, go back, re-listen to those two episodes, but I'm still going to give you a brief recap here. Um. Uh, we we want to build a jar, JRPG stylized uh, game. There will be some elements that are different. One of my issues with JRPGs are the combats are too long. Um, I hate that, um, especially hmm. like. Uh, are, are you are you referring to like the old school style or like the old the school, newer like, stuff? like the Square Enix stuff? Really? Right? Uh, like like Final Fantasy, like fights w- would take two or three minutes every fight and you're always fighting and the monsters always scale to your level or close enough. So, uh, it's never a quick fight. And, and so, and I was just recently playing the one that came out on the switch. Oh my goodness. I can't remember the name of it. Um, Occupath Traveler. And, um, Not familiar and it, with that one. it's sort of like a successor to final fantasy six, I guess you may say it's like an old school JRPG, uh, from be before final fantasy seven. Um, and and so it was a fun game, but the problem was that I, I got sick of playing it because they make you run back and forth on the map, and and the fights take like literally three minutes per fight, which mm-hmm. doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're used to playing these games, you realize that every map that you're navigating through, you have several fights on every map. So uh, if you're lucky, you have like two. And so it, it gets very tedious sometimes when you start moving back and forth. So I kind of lost interest. So... The fights in my games will be quick. Mm-hmm. Um, as you level up, hopefully, if I can figure out how to do it, it they will become less sparse. Areas won't level. Um, there might be a little bit of it, but in general, I want there to be tough areas. So if you get to the tough areas really quickly, you will have your tushy handed to you. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you are in the easy areas with yeah, a high level, on, hopefully I can figure out a way to prevent or slow down the fights. I'm a big fan of that style because that's all that was really available in really, really old games. And yeah, the thing yeah. that I liked about it is every now and then you could get lucky going into an area that you were not ready to do mm-hmm. and win a yeah. couple of fights and power level like one or two levels quickly. I would Which, say I would say from an RPG standpoint, it's more realistic to not have the uh, scaling, which mm. is like every game does the scaling now. Yeah, they want, I'm not a fan of the scaling. And like you know, Skyrim kind of does it, and it works to a point. But then after a certain point, you're so powerful, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's a um, ben- there's a benefit to it in that if you're um, running into the same enemies over and over again, it's annoying to run into like, oh, I've run into a couple of, you yeah. know, warthogs and, yeah. you know, it, they're just annoying because now I'm going to fight with them and it'll just go swap swap and they're dead. Whereas with, with scaling, it's like warthogs are still a problem because they've scaled up. Be- because and it's they're still now the fight. same level to me. Yeah. You know, um, most games are not Skyrim where the monsters become really easy after about level 20 or something like that. Mm. So, um, but like, like even if you like go to older Bethesda games, like Morrowind, there were monsters that you could have beaten Morrowind. There were mobs that if you went and fought, they would still trash you um, mm. <laughs> because they were just out of your, out of your league. Um, but part of that goes, I think into the whole, everyone's, um, you know, is a, a Messiah style character in games now the only mm. hope or some such thing like that but that's fine well but that that's been that way for quite some time though and the, 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 i the see classic, why it makes sense the classic right? chosen one when you i like 
play like games that have that trope in there. So I, you know, I, I'm not necessarily complaining, but the problem is, um, it always considers you the most powerful person at some point, And no matter who you fight against, if they allow you to kill them, um, uh, you will go. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to allow you to kill anyone. Probably not. I probably just won't allow that to happen just for uh, simplicity's sake. Uh, I could be a jerk and allow, allow you to kill anything, but the story would screw you over. I would guarantee you, you wouldn't be able to finish the story one of my games if that happened. Hmm. Um, was I but, would, but is that what you will? I think that at that point, we're talking about design, not story. Yeah. And you, sh- and you so should. I'm getting cons- way off the track. Yes. Well, yeah, but I, th- but I do think it's something important to consider. And if you're going to go that mm-hmm. road, I think that you have to get to a thematic approach first and just decide, do I want this to be, um, uh, I specifically want you to have this experience. So put Mm -hmm. it on rails or allow them to screw it up or allow them to be punished by, but they'll still get an ending, even if it's not the one that's the best. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, this will be my first game. So probably initially there will be one ending. I'm hoping Mm -hmm. for a couple at Mm -hmm. least. Um, that your choices actually cause you to happen. Mm -hmm. Like I want an ending where you lose. Um, Mm -hmm. Those are missing in games now. And I don't like that. Um, I get why, because if you're not an RPG person, you hate that. Um, But for me, and we'll talk a little bit about this when we get, well, I mean, if you, if you are an RPG person, that doesn't necessarily mean that you like losing either. You don't like losing, but you, you can appreciate that, that it that took you that path. That's yeah, right. Yeah. You that's probably true. don't like it. I mean, most people don't like losing. But um, as an RPG person, if you get me because of a choice I make, I respect that. It annoys me sometimes, uh, but I can respect that. Uh, there's a, as long as there's, it's not a cheesy thing like, oh, you drop down the pit in the dungeon and there's no way out. You're going to die. Hmm. There's a, a game that I played where a lot of choice in the game and there was multiple, I want to say there were like three to five endings. And one of them is so uh, batshit crazy. And I got the batshittiest crazy ending. Uh, like I had watched all the endings on the internet later and I was like, why is that ending so out of left field and totally crazy compared to the mm-hmm. overall story of the game? Mm-hmm. And the other endings like made pretty good sense. It was like they were like, just put one in. It's like totally crazy. And that's the one that I happened to get. I don't remember why it triggered. I don't remember what what course of actions I took that triggered that they, ending. They tagged you as an arbitrary decision maker. Like it was basically most of the game was relatively within the bounds of reality, but your character had some sort of, you know, extrasensory uh, abilities. And uh, by the end of the game, it was post-apocalyptic. We were living underground and an internet AI had become uh, physical and was like running the world as a demigod. I'm like, how, how is this even remotely what the story was about in the beginning? In the beginning, it was about a guy who has a couple extrasensory powers and a murder he was trying to solve. You know, it was like so nuts. I have a good news and bad news on the AI taking over the world. How so? I am certain at some point an AI will become so powerful it takes over the world. Oh, yeah. The so good news is time. so much money online is dumped into pornography sites. It will be a porn AI. I <laughs> My, <laughs> that is one of the funniest vision. ideas that I have heard in a long time. <laughs> uh, that would make an interesting story, definitely. Uh, someone feel free to steal that one and let us run, know when you run, run, run with that. <laughs> okay. Uh, some of the background uh, for the people. There is a period of time in my world. There's a section of my world called the arm of the world. And it's where the Bedracken people are. And there was a period of time where there was a mass migration by orcs, actually a couple different tribes of orcs into the area where the Bedrackums were. And, um, and the humans were completely subjugated by the orcs. Um, and there was actually a period of time and this kind of goes into, if you went to episode 307, this is before the story style of content. Um, um, there was a period of time where the last Bedrackum king surrendered. And so I think this is going to be the story of his grandson. Um, and he's going to be the person who's going to start turning the wheels of rebellion in the country. He's not going to go into full rebellion. And that's, I want to be one of the negative responses in the game is if you pull up too much infamy um, and you actually garner the attention of the, uh, uh, the entire Ordescent empire, 
uh, you couldn't handle the response at this point. They'll just send like a massive army and wipe you out. So you have to kind of be somewhat thoughtful in what you do. You know, if you just start conquering everything around you, there will be a response that will will will, will kill you. Um, now, does that mean that this character, the, the grandson, is your playable character? Yes. Okay. Yes. And, so you are the grandson. And I, I don't know if there will be a – there probably won't be like a create-your-own-character thing here. Uh, there might be. I don't know what the mechanics are for RPG Maker and doing that. I don't care. Um, it's a story about an actual historical character in my world. I, I kind of know what happened. Um, for, the, for the sake of agency, would you be willing to say it's a grandchild, not a grandson? We'll say, or grand, we'll, we'll say a grandchild at this point. It, it doesn't matter to me, um, the gender, actually. Um, I just uh, historically written down on my timeline, it's a guy, but I don't care. Personally, it could have been a male or female character. And in the game, if I can figure it out, I'll let people build their own because I I like building my character. I like character building, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, but the idea is you are the character. Okay. And so the before the story, and this is going back to episode, I think, 307, we talked about what are the basic elements of a story. And that's kind of where I want to get to today is what are the basic elements of the story going to be? And I, I think one of the ideas is um, I, 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 I want the protagonist to be out of the country, like, probably smuggled out so i think the father uh you know the intermediate uh you know the son of the guy who lost the throne uh was uh betrayed and he rushed maybe a small party of characters out like his 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 kid and some kids of uh supportive nobles like literally at, like usher them out of the country so they wouldn't be assassinated yeah, I gotta kill that bloodline. Yes, to protect the bloodline. So um, so I think what's gonna happen is uh and this is where I don't know exactly how I want it to happen. Like to me, there's a thought he survived um and finally passes away. And his title, because since his his grandfather surrendered, the orcs gave him a title, and he's in a very obscure, out of the way part of the country. Um uh, is where the title is. It's like nothing great, but grand librarian. <laughs> well, no, it'll it'll be like a count. Okay. Um, um he, he'll be like a natural count in in the terms of English nobility terms. Um, I'm still a big like, fan of grand librarian. I think that should be added somewhere. Uh, we'll work on that one. Uh, we will come. But what will happen is, um, I, I think. Uh, the father will survive the attempted assassination of the kids. The kids will be saved off years later. Like uh, you've now come of age and lo and behold, your father was murdered. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, a shocking turn of events to happen in our RPG. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you want to go that cookie cutter? Um, do you want to go that recipe? I don't know. I don't know. Cause there are other thoughts too. Like, what happens if the father's dead and you're just coming back for revenge? Uh, that's an interesting how often too. that I, I I know it's been done before. I cannot think of an example though where you're straight up a vengeful bad guy in an RPG. Mm-hmm. And you're not necessarily even a you're a bad guy by someone else's perspective. Um, oh, isn't everybody? You know, and there, I hopefully there'll be some agency in there for players. I don't want it to be strictly railed where you can't make choices, and I want there to be certain types of consequences. Like maybe um, if you're too cruel, uh, you don't end up with enough troops to do what you want to do. Because ultimately, medieval warfare, even with magic involved, a big chunk of it has to do with numbers. And, Mm. you know, if your technology is equal and they have numbers, you're probably going to lose. Especially if you get to like two to one or three to one odds. And so one of the ideas is I think, the name will be the dirge of the tribes. And this is sort of the point where the Bedrakim tribes uh, kind of, you know, when, when this, this person comes up with the idea of feudalism, you know, like the next stage, you know, of civilization for the tribes, but the last leaders of all the tribes are going to be in this like remote area of the country. And, um, and they were kind of the holdouts with the final King 
but the orcs didn't, you know, necessarily want the bloodshed of the loss of their people, their military. They wanted it for other things. So they struck a deal. But a lot of the malcontents are still in the area, and as long as they behave, the orcs won't come down on them. To try and prevent them from misbehaving, the duke um, in charge of essentially the tribes is a pretty powerful orc. Um, and and therein lies the problem is uh, – and 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 the crux to the game, what you're trying to accomplish is the overthrowing of the Duke without bringing in the ire of the Emperor, essentially. Mm. Uh, so <laughs> good luck with that. The warlord, <laughs> the Emperor, whatever you want to call him. So, um, so do you want to have that be like a teetering scale that'll determine which ending you get? Yeah, I think so. I think that's the way it's going to be is, you know, it's like. And you can be evil, I think, and come out either way or good. Like th- there'll be chances for you to do things on a shady level or like an honest, pure level. Um, but you know, in theory, the orcas stories, you are the bad guy mm. because they they are now the rulers of the land, and you're going to create this thing that ultimately blows up into a full scale revolution. And humans have numbers on orcs, as we've talked about in previous episodes as well, too. So once a full human revolt starts going up. The orcs know, you know, they've started to settle down. They don't have the their old ways aren't as strong as they used to be. They they start losing, um, and and quickly get pushed back to a very defensive position, um, and what's later called the Kingdom of Redessa. But the interesting thing is with the story is this is sort of not the end of their rule over the humans, but it's it's like the end of the beginning, I guess you would say. So it's the overthrow of one key person where the heir of the great grand king, um, you know, the great granddad is the king. His grandchild uh, becomes the duke instead of a count. And that's a key event to where you can start consolidating power and start having the choice to go out and, 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 and start meeting with other lords and started getting uh, more support built out because for he knows to succeed – in the greater rebellion, they will have to strike in many locations at once. So the Orcish army just can't focus on one thing. Well, what is the difference between a Duke and a Count? I don't, I don't know which one's higher. So essentially um, a, a Duke will have essentially several counties under his control. Some of them will be under his personal control. Mm-hmm. and Some of them will actually have counts assigned to them. Okay. So, so the Duke's so, bigger. So the Duke is bigger. He has more land, ergo more finances to support more troops. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and theoretically, in a feudal system, you owe your allegiance to the guy next in line. So technically, his allegiance is to the Duke, not to the emperor. Um, but or, orcish isn't quite the same as Western feudalism. You know, the, 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 the uh, king in charge is your, is your boss. You know, he's, the Khan of Khan is the guy you, uh, you work for. So... Um, that's the thing to keep in mind, but that's a lot of the background stuff. And I think the inciting incident, there's a couple thoughts here is you get smuggled out with a couple of your friends. So you have obviously a party of characters, which is important in your old school JRPG game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I've been shit to this sort of heavily Roman influenced country called Sheftar. And, um, and, this could either be backstory or, or inciting incident. And it kind of depends on how we want the story to go. I think is there is actually an assassination attempt on the children. This was years later, you know, uh, the Duke figures out where they are and it would be convenient if the heirs die because then the lands would uh, pass to him Mm. and that would make him happy. Um, So, so for him, it would be very convenient if the heirs die off. So um, I, I think if, the father's assassinated. Uh, his castle will be burned. And then they'll try and go assassinate all of these kids because he's trying to uh, make sure there's no legitimate claims on the land he's going to inherit from people. Hmm. So um, by force. <laughs> Inher- in- inheritance by force. <laughs> yeah. And um, there's another thing too where after the time they leave, there's actually a group of merchants that become very influential in the area. It's the area, and this is sort of a classic JRPG map. You know, there's a giant lake in the middle. 
Um, well, is um, that uh, I've I've looked at maps with Arm of the World. <clears throat> is it a lake or is it a uh, part of an ocean? This is a lake. This is not the inner sea. Okay. <laughs> this is a very, very, very small fraction. Okay. Uh, you can't see it if you see a map of the entire world. It's like, okay. It's like it's it's inside of the mountains in the arm. There's like mm-hmm. mountain ranges that kind of go down the middle. Mm-hmm. Like the ends of one of the rivers is there at mm-hmm. a lake. And a whole bunch of mountain rivers kind of converge to create this lake. And then a greater river goes out actually to the city of Hiawa, um, is at the uh, mouth of the ocean. Uh, but that's way far away. So these humans are really, they're like tucked in. These mountains aren't passable by armies. Um, and there's unfriendly orcs up there. There's these other uh, clan of orcs, another tribe of orcs up in the mountains who hate you. Um, they're not that they hate you. They just need your stuff so they don't die. And they'll take it from you if they get a chance. Mm. The Duke is at the mouth of this county, and he won't let you leave. Once you get in, you're, you'll be trapped. That'll be a, a thing to try and keep you pinned in to a very small part of the world. Now, is that just like a strategic thing or like anyone who lives there, he doesn't allow you to leave like that area. In general, like you have you to need live and die permission. there. You need his permission to live or to, to live. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. To leave <laughs> uh, and to live. Uh, you know, it's very old school. People are all tied to the land anyway. So you're not supposedly allowed to move uh, without permission of your liege lord anyway. So, um, that wouldn't be very, um, and, and orcs too, uh, if, if they're your Lord, you're their property. So that's never good. So, and I kind of want your opinion here, like story-wise, do you think like going down the path of back for revenge? You know, I mean, you might not tell that story to yourself. Your story might be, I'm back to claim my, my father and grandfather's inheritance, Mm. the lands promised to them by the emperor. Um, which the theory is a valid claim. Um, the emperor probably wouldn't act for you showing up and starting to do bad things as long as you don't act against him. Um, I just like uh, the concept of uh, vengeance being the motivator for an air quotes hero. Yeah, yeah. So it just in in the terms of originality, I'm a fan of that concept. Um, so what we'll do, I think this will be the inciting incident is – you're, you're off in this very fancy place. Uh, you have a pretty good life. You're old enough now. You've come of age. Uh, you know, maybe you're part of the auxiliary um, uh, troops for the Shiftarian legions. Um, and they come and try and kill you. You and your friends decide that you need to pull out, which you can do legitimately. And it's time to go home and take back what's yours. Hmm. Um, you know, just just my county i would never stand up against the emperor because mm. you do understand that that would be suicide mm-hmm, uh but you get smuggled back in um and there's one small city at um near where the major river uh flows out of the um uh flows out of the um uh lake where that happens there will actually be is is the closest thing to a city it's it's you know really a small village but it's walled but that's where like these merchants are set up at um and they kind of are controlling the trade in this area it's become very lucrative for them in the way things have become and so there's another issue is some of your people benefit from the new system and they're probably not going to like you coming back and shaking it up so Hmm. um uh what could very well happen there is um, you're going to come back to the city and there'll probably be a fight at that point, which, you know, to introduce you to the, the, the simple fighting system of these old school games, but um, also to introduce you probably to one, one more character who will take you back home. And then the ultimate sort of stake and the ultimate incident here will be, you get home and you find out your father's been murdered. You think he's been murdered, but you don't know. Um, years later when they come after you, you go back because you were waiting to hear back from your father before he returned and he never responded. You'll find out that he died. Not, not when you thought he did, but years later. Um, and so that will start more, more problems. (laughs) All right. So we have the inciting incident. We have character motivation. Um, do you have, uh, I mean, obviously what you just described could also be, um, uh, considered the first strike. Well, no, no. The first strike you is. You don't think that 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 would be a little bit of a setback? 
Oh, it's a setback, but that's just the inciting incident. Oh, that's all part of the inciting incident. Yeah. So okay. I, I, I think from going down this theme, my idea would be you would assume that because of your family's blood, that all of the, the, the tribal leaders in the area, um, most of which aren't even no, like like count level nobles, they're uh, they they all have little holdings in this area though. Um, you, you're going to assume that they're going to send you're going to dispatch people to say raise your troops. We're going to go and we're going to confront the duke, and um, and essentially, uh, you know, messengers will, will be sent out. The duke will gather some troops and come down, and lo and behold. You show up with your people and no one else is there. <laughs> They're like, we don't even know who you are. You don't oh, even look like one of us. We're not oh, showing up for you. That's and so bad. you're kind of left out. Uh, you're sort of routed, you know, before the battle starts because of deep betrayal. So then the idea, I think, of the story, the fallout is, you know, the Duke now knows what you're trying to do hmm. and is trying to capture you and trying to force you into a position to where he can do it now he knows you're in a you'll have a a a small holding which would be expensive you'd have to siege it to get it it's a tough thing to siege so he won't want to do that he's going to try and lure you out and capture you and and kill you outright to end the threat or send assassins and he's going to come up with other things that will be the fallout now the actual thing is, and I think this is where you know the strike, the fallout, um, keep going back and forth is you're gonna have to come up with ways to reunite the tribes all under you. And then what do you call yourself? You know, you know, if you call yourself the king, mm. the Odessa king probably wouldn't like that. Mm-mm. So uh um so you're gonna have to come up with a way to organize the people in a new way to start striking back. And um, I think that's kind of the flow of the story. I think that's I think that's pretty good as a basic run. Now, there's obviously side quests in there. You know, there are I think seven tribes, if I remember correctly, five or seven tribes um, that you have to unite in here. Plus, there'll probably be some other side quests and stuff too. Um, it'll introduce one of my favorite characters, Eric the Mage. Um, um, you know, to the greater world. Uh, so um, the, the character my wife named our son after. So, uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I think I think that's really it. You know, and the after story is what's the emperor's response to a human taking a high noble position? You know, it's one thing to be a count, but to say that you're now a duke on top of whatever you're calling yourself, this is mm-hmm. really when you 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 garner the, you know, his boss's attention and uh, and um, the possible repercussions there are actually the after story because the real story is the the battle between the duke and the knight. So is it possible you could win and beat the duke and still lose because well you were too aggressive, you were too bold, uh, you were too anti orc, and now you're going to have the emperor show up with so many more troops that your little corner of the world is trapped and done. You're too anti work. I love works. No, no. Hmm. <laughs> it's kind of funny, actually. It just well, like you were saying that humans have the numbers on orcs, which cracks me up because there's um, other. It's always backwards, isn't it? Yeah. Well, y- usually, yeah. And um, in uh, Shadowrun, at least, orcs uh, breed uh, like litters. Like they usually, they mm-hmm. usually give birth to like six at yeah. a time. Mm-hmm. So it's a, a totally different. Um, population development than the way humans you know evolve and and uh yeah. exp- expand because they most definitely just and that's number, one of those things they where just can outnumber them big time as a, a storyteller uh, i like to take tropes people know and i like to twist them in my thing now if you're fighting an orc horde there are orc hordes the thing is they're very good at using their mobile troops to pull numbers together and concentrate to defeat strategic spots that's their advantage the uh, their disadvantage and a lot more of them man for man do fighting. Mm. The problem is um, humans are all over the place and you just don't have the numbers. Once you start gathering large areas, you just start losing chunks of troops spread out over a couple thousand miles. And now your old strategy of, um, you know, keeping a, 
consolidation and going in with a big group, a big army, the army gets smaller over time. So um, th that's sort of the way it rolls, you know. So you still get this impression when you're fighting them that it's like this massive thing. They can still bring great numbers to wield. Um, the problem is when they do that, they start leaving exposures in other areas. So, um, and uh, the humans are smart. Um, the orcs are smart too. They're doing the best they can. They use a lot of fear and intimidation, which gives them a bad reputation, but allows them to rule for a long time over a much greater population. Um, but, you know, once the humans really revolt in force, and the advantage is kind of broken at that point because they kind of know your weakness, then, um, you know, the illusion of a huge horde doesn't matter if they splintered all over the country because now this other minor leader, this minor con, you know, his personal holdings are under attack. He ain't going to help the big guy. He ain't going to help the con of cons because his personal wealth is now at risk. So he's going to stay back and take care of his area and it splinters out. And then the number uh, games swaps back into the human uh, area. So um, that's just the way it rolls um, in my world. And unfortunately the way I build it, the orcs lose because once again, numbers, they just lose. Mm -hmm. So, um, but they make an impact. And, and they never lose completely. That's the not nice thing. So, um, but yeah, no, that that's really it though. So, are there any other big decisions regarding the overall arc of things that you haven't decided yet? Uh, no, I don't. I don't. I mean, do you see any? You know, anything? That, I mean, like obviously, I could throw. A, there will be some details in there that you know probably. You know, there will be some red herrings, some betrayals and stuff mm -hmm, like that, that mm -hmm. have to happen to make it a more compelling story. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't know if I necessarily want to get into too much of those details, um, you know, and, and, until parts of the game start getting released at least. So, right. Um, yeah. So there we go. And uh, Will there be or do you want any part of the game to um, like this is this character is going to. Uh, um, have offspring that that are playable characters no i just don't think that would be easy so i don't think that's going to happen so all right fair enough yeah. that was one thing that they did in like um fantasy star three i think that i thought was such a cool mechanic there was another good uh square enix game back in the day like romancing the blah blah i can't remember if you remember the name romancing, romancing the all the, the dragons and but, the princess it, and, it, it, and, it was essentially it was a dynasty generator so essentially you you it was a JRPG game where you kind of went around and 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 did battle against your your foes and your characters would die off and their children would take their place and so it was kind of a neat a neat it's a concept that intrigues me. It just I'm not there yet. Mm -hmm. So uh, if I enjoy doing this, I you know, the next version, you know, the civil war itself, you know, it might go that route where there's a little bit of strategy, a little bit more strategy and a little bit um um, maybe dynastic kind of thoughts put in there too. So, cause that would be interesting. Um, but a story for another day. Do you, do you have a name? Do you have a name for it yet? Uh, it's the dirge of the, Oh, that's right. You had said that before the, the, the dirge of, um, say it again. Yeah, it's the, that's the, the dirge of the seven tribes and it might be the five tribes. I forget to be honest. Um, but, um, it's the dirge of the Bedrakum tribes. So, that that will be the at least the working title and now the world building task for the day michael you look ready to uh, uh share some inspiration with people uh world building task of the day uh well look not everybody is going to sit down and create a um a, a jrpg mm -hmm. so what could we create what could we offer them to create that's in line with this Endeavor, but not quite as grandiose. Well, going back to episode 307, right? Put together a basic story, just those elements, right? Like the elements. This is pre outline, this is pre getting into the details, but put together a basic story and then, and then like create it, like write it out or script it out, uh, at least outline an actual story so you can mm. see the story in your head just to practice. And uh, those steps were, um, what I know, background, 
uh, before the story, the inciting incident, the strike, which you could have multiple strikes and fallouts. The fallout is the next one, the run, and then after the story. Yeah. And uh, Jeff outlines all of these in the other episode, which is 268. 307 is the episode where we talk about I story. was so close. 268 was where we were talking about the, this game. Oh, so. gotcha. Okay, so 307 is what you want to go back to for the explanation of all the jazz I just said. Yep. And and then for a world building task, um, real world task. <laughs> for real world task, uh, I guess my one now is you know make sure to take care of your health. You know if you have any health issues, take care of those. Um, whether you're sick or you're not getting enough sleep, whatever it is, take care of yourself a little bit. A little self love um, is. Kind of <laughs> I'm a my name. big fan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for listening. Yep. Talk to you later. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends. And so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting. Take them to Stitcher or iTunes, or best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike while the mythical's hot.